Hello everyone. Uh, in last lecture, <coughs> uh, uh, properties of living organism, we have uh, already covered growth and reproduction and we are right now uh, continuing with the process of metabolism, the third very important characteristic feature of living organism. So, let us discuss metabolism. Now, as we know, the living organisms are being alive because they are showing physiological functions. So, we all living organisms are capable of doing physiological processes. Now, these physiological processes are physical processes. Similar uh, example, if I want to quote uh, the scooter or the vehicle, what we drive to cover a particular distance. So, traveling a distance is a physical process, right? But <coughs> to do the physical process or physical job, physical uh, work, we are supposed to apply force generate power and use that power to do that work. Now, generating that power, you, uh, we are supposed to do a particular type of set of reactions called chemical reactions. So, any of the physical, uh, physical reaction is depending on certain types of chemical reactions. Those chemical reaction which are seen in living organism within our body, our cell is metabolism. Due to metabolism which are chemical processes, our cells or our body enables to perform physiological processes like uh, respiration, like digestion, like movement, like reproduction, etc. So, metabolism are set of chemical reactions which are happening within our body. That is how you are supposed to remember the process of metabolism. Now, as far as chemical processes are concerning, there can be having two types of reactions. Ready? we are going to learn it later on. So, if I want to define the metabolism, it is a sum total of all the biochemical processes or reactions which are taking place in our body, in a single system. It may be organism, it may be cell, right? Now, it is the defining feature of living organism mind the word defining feature. The meaning of that word is it cannot be performed by non-living things. So, only living things or living organisms can do metabolism. Metabolism cannot be performed by non-living things. Ready? So, that is why it is called defining feature of living organism. I request you to take a snapshot or a screenshot of the uh, slide so that you can make your own notes. Ready? Fine. <coughs> uh, metabolism, as I said earlier, is having two types of reaction which are occurring and it is a combination of two types of reaction, right? The one type of reaction is anabolism and the other type of reaction is catabolism. As we have 
uh, uh, already got the knowledge about this both kind of reactions ready we know that uh, anabolism are the process where something is getting synthesized so two or more than two small molecules accumulate together to form a larger molecule so there we have synthesis of something and catabolism are the reaction where large molecule is getting separated or getting broken into smaller pieces ready so catabolism are the reaction where something is getting denatured Right. So, larger molecule is getting converted into smaller molecule in catabolism and smaller molecule accumulates to form a larger molecule into the anabolic reactions. Both type of reactions can be possible within a system or within the cell. So, a single cell can uh, perform anabolism as well and catabolism as well as per their requirement. Any of the living organism are performing both type of reaction and some total means all together we are saying it as metabolism. That is what you are supposed to remember. Ready? So, anabolism and catabolism are two types of uh, processes which are happening. Fine. The picture which is given here, right? The photograph which is uh, shown here, it is showing a particular type of reaction which is uh, happening in laboratory in a particular or specific type of condition right so uh, if the similar reaction to our metabolism is happening or is performed within the laboratory it is called in vitro type of reaction right here uh, two types of metabolic processes can be possible one is in vivo second is in vitro in vitro it is into the cell free medium right cell free medium means not happening within the cell in the laboratory then it is called cell free state ready so this is the example of in vitro process and in vivo is what it is happening in our body so inside living system within our body it is in vivo metabolism in vitro metabolism which is happening the similar reaction which is happening outside our body that is into uh, into the laboratory right So, metabolic reactions can be demonstrated outside our body as well into the self-free systems. Ready? Isolated metabolic reaction are in vitro, right? And that are not into the living things, not performed into the living things, but they are living reaction. The reaction are happening within our body as well. So, they reactions are living reactions but they are not performed in uh, living cell or living organism so don't get confused with this word now uh, one very uh, uh, interesting fact uh, which is uh, actually convert uh, connected with the growth right so, let us discuss the correlation between growth and metabolism. How growth is connected uh, with metabolism? Now, as we know that there are two types of reaction which are happening, either anabolism or catabolism and I have clear cut, uh, clearly mentioned that uh, the anabolism includes synthesis of material and catabolism is denaturation or rupture 
of material. Now, if I say during metabolism, mind it very well, during metabolism, if anabolism is more than the catabolism, then synthesis of material is more. So, growth is the result of this kind of metabolism and if the catabolism is more then degrowth is possible because then rupture is more denaturation is more than synthesis right so growth is also result of metabolism that is the conclusion of this discussion fine so please uh, mind it very well that growth is connected straight away with the process of metabolism or result of the metabolism right and that is the way how it is concerning uh, during growth uh, anabolism is more and during degrowth catabolism is more I request you once more to take the screenshot of the slide. Fine. Next characteristic feature of living organism is cellular organization, right? Uh, we have uh, actually discussed this phenomena uh, in first lecture. So, right now I will not uh, discuss it into the deep. Uh, very shortly uh, what we know till now is an organism is made up of organ system each organ system consisting organs each organs are composed of tissues and all tissues are made up of cells so here this kind of arrangement is termed as cellular organization. Cell makes tissue, tissue makes organ, organ makes organ system, organ system makes organism. It is arranged, this entire arrangement is known as cellular organization, right. So, in that term or in that uh, point of view, organisms are made up of one or more cells, unicellular or multicellular and it is also defining feature of living organism because non-living things never are made up of cells. So, it is also defining feature of living organism. Ready? I hope you are clear with this idea. So, <coughs> metabolism and cellular organization, these two are unique and defining feature of all living organisms only, not of non-living organism. I request you once again to take a screenshot of this slide. Fine. Consciousness. Ready? Consciousness is also a defining feature of living organism. Now, what is a meaning of consciousness? It is ability of an organism to sense their environment and respond accordingly to the stimulus. It may be light, may be water temperature, the other organism, few chemicals, few pollutants, etc. So, if we see or if we sense those stimulants, we sense them and we respond accordingly. And this process of to sense and to respond is collaboratively known as consciousness and that is shown only by living organism. Non-living cannot respond, living things only can respond, right. So, please take the screenshot of this slide.
uh, all organisms are aware that is conscious about their surroundings so it is defining property of living organism as i said earlier so it is only property which is shown by living organism but not by non living organism uh, not living things please take the screenshot now humans are self conscious so human is the only organism which is having property of self consciousness we are self conscious we are thinking about our self as well than the others right so we are self conscious or self aware and that characteristic feature is shown only by humans none other than humans right so self awareness or basic self consciousness what we say it is being aware of oneself as we are different from the rest of the world ready so that is having an experience of being oneself we always try to think that whether i am looking good or not i am looking perfect or not i am getting marks or not i will be able to create uh, history or not i'll be clearing the neat examination so i we think about i more right and that is called self consciousness and that property is shown by humans right so please uh, take the screenshot of this slide now the last thing what we are about to discuss in this lecture is the last property right uh sometimes consciousness uh is not shown and the person the living organism is not die then also it is living this can be the condition in certain abnormal stages right two things or two kind of situations what we are observing right now on the screen is one is brain dead and one is coma right these are the properties for example a human being a living person is going from one place to the other met with an accident and it is going into the coma so he is not responding but he is or she is still living right so we cannot consider it as non living uh, just before uh, two slides we have considered the consciousness as a defining character of living organism right so <clears throat> uh, let us discuss further deeply about situation of coma and situations of brain death right so this is actually related with the awareness or consciousness now let us first discuss about the coma it is similar to deep sleep due to the thrash due to the accident our brain loses the capacity of uh, responding for a little or longer time and that situation is coma ready so there is no amount of external stimuli can be prompted to the brain to become awake or alert for little time or long time so person is still alive and its recovery is still possible now let me clarify the brain death to you it is often confused with a persistent vegetative state right now what is meaning of vegetative state right now vegetative state is defined here a persistent vegetative state means the person has lost higher brain functions but 
their undamaged brain stem still allows essential function like heart rate and respiration to continue now again once again coma is something where a very little portion of brain is damaged and the brain death is what here major portion of brain is damaged that is the difference between both the condition coma very little portion is damaged brain death is major portion of the brain is damaged but undamaged region of the brain allows the essential function like heart continues to pump and uh, the lungs continues to breathe so still it is living so in both the condition the person is into the living state remains into the living state ready so that's what you are supposed to get clear by your mind about both of this condition both of this abnormality and it is generally happened either with the uh, extreme shock or accident right so vegetative state uh, in general term if i want to define it is immovable state like uh, the plants right a person in a vegetative state is still alive and may recover to some degree uh, in the given time right but brain death means a person has died right brain death means the person has died but still if the brain functions the necessary part of the uh, heart or respiration then it is called alive but if it will not be supporting this kind of essential function then it can be died ready right? so that is the difference between both of them so this is about the consciousness so here i am ending the session and we will be continuing about uh, the uh, topic of the uh, real classification from next lecture onwards so till then uh, have a nice time and take care